What's happening people in bike land? This is Pete with Backdraft Bikes coming at you with a quick video on how to change the oil in your Scrambler 1200. It's actually easier than you would think. You don't need to go to the dealer to have this done. If you have any sense of mechanical ability, you can do it. So here's what you need to get going. First thing you need is oil. We are using Castrol Syntec. This is specially formulated for motorcycles, 1040-4T as in Triumph. You will need a filter. I really, really like the K&N 204-1 filter, and there's a good reason why, which you'll see in a minute. You'll need a drain pan. All the tools you really need is a 17 millimeter socket and an eight millimeter hex head on a ratchet. Okay, let's do this. First thing you wanna do is make sure that your bike is warmed up. Take it for a quick rip down the road, come back, pull it in the garage, and get it on the side stand. I will tell you the side stand is the way to go with this because the drain plug is on that side of the motor, so oil will fall down because it will be the lowest point. Okay, so on the bottom of the engine itself, we'll just go over the anatomy. This is your skid plate. This keeps rocks from bashing your oil plan. Your oil filter is right here, and the drain plug for everything oil on this bike is right here. So let's get a drain pan underneath, and then we are going to take our ratchet with the seven, excuse me, with the eight millimeter hex head on it, fit it snugly in there, and break her free. While the oil is draining, you can take this time to loosen up your oil filter. And this is why I like the K&N filter because it has the nut welded onto the bottom, which makes it extremely easy to change in this type of situation. The factory oil filter does not have that. And it's very difficult to get pliers in to grab onto it because of the way the sump is located on this bike. So after your first factory filter is expired, go ahead and grab the K&N and you will thank me later on that. Just spin that off. Once the oil drains out of here, you wanna take a rag and very carefully wipe down and away from the oil filter. Just to make sure that we don't get any dirt in the engine at all. We wanna make sure this surface is clean. While this is draining, it's important to take a little bit of oil and just lube the O-ring that goes on the new oil filter. Also, to prevent a dry start, you can, if you wish, pour a little bit of oil into the oil filter. That way, the engine doesn't have a dry filter when it starts. Once you're happy with it, just get it in place and spin it on. Give it a quick clean to indicate if there's a leak after you start it. You don't want old oil on this. It will just attract dirt and make you think you have a leak when you actually don't. A little bit of caution. We're going to give this a little bit of a snug, but not much because we do not want to distort the O-ring. I just give it about a quarter turn. That way, because this is a scrambler and we're off road with it sometimes, we don't want that loosening back up. And see, I can just move it with my hand. That's about the perfect tightness. Once the oil's drained out, just get your drain plug back in and give it a little tight. We're gonna snug this up so it doesn't come loose, but we're not gonna strip that out. We're gonna be really easy on it. Once everything's in and it's looking buttoned up, we're gonna clean this nice because that's how we're gonna tell if we successfully tightened everything down the way it should be. Our next step is to actually put new oil in the crankcase. And you can use a rather large hex head with an extension to come down through the top. And this is very tight from the factory if this is the first time you're doing it. But what I like to do is just use a pair of channel locks and a rag wrapped in it to prevent damage to the oil fill. And just be careful because if the engine's hot, this area gets very hot because it's right next to the header pipes. Once you get the plug out, you're gonna use a funnel and you're gonna come down through just like this. This is where the piece of wood comes in handy. In order to get this level and put the correct amount of oil in, 
via the sight glass, you do have to have the bike somewhat level. So instead of having somebody sit on it, I take a two by four and stick it underneath the kickstand. This will get me pretty close to line up with what the sight glass is gonna want. All right, let's add some oil. Once we get close, I've got about three quarts in, a little over. I'm gonna clean the sight glass off really nice. And I'm gonna take a look. Right now, it doesn't appear that I have any oil on there. When it's correctly changed, you want it to be between the bottom and the top notch. As you can see, three and a half quarts were right in the middle of those two notches. I'm gonna start the engine, check for leaks, and then recheck my oil level. No leaking, and no leaking. Awesome. Now we're gonna check our sight glass one more time after the engine oil settles down, and I'm gonna lean the bike towards me so it's completely level. As you can see right there, the oil is right at the bottom, so we're gonna add just a touch more, and we're good to go. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate the views, and if you have any comments below, feel free to drop them. Of course, an oil change is only the first part of a standard service. Please consult your manual to see the other points that you need to check. Have a safe day, everybody.